Ralph from Primal for you. I'm having a live streaming interview on Friday the 2nd of April, 9 p.m. Central European time with the Dean Metal Galaxy channel on YouTube. So check it out. See you there. Maybe they will also forward your questions, okay? Looking forward. Cheers. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Tonight we are traveling from coldy and raining Dublin to Germany and we will be traveling to learn something about the German power and heavy metal scene and we are going to meet Rolf. Hello. Welcome. Rolf, can you introduce us for those who are not familiar with the German and heavy power metal scene, who you are? Well, I'm Rolf Schieffer, the singer of uh, Primal Fear and I was I was the singer of Gamma Ray, and I was the singer of Time Bay, so we quite in, in the business for a while, so people from the metal scene might know me, so yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, there might be very few people who would know who you are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, let's start from the beginning of Primal Fear. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us how the name Primal Fear was born? Yeah, I mean... Um, there's, I mean, I told so many, uh, so much about our history in the last few interviews, but I will repeat, of course, and um, about the name. We had a short list of names, and in the end, we thought that the movie title Primal Fear, which is a movie title by in the end, uh, is quite interesting for, for a metal band. Primal Fear is a, is a strong expression, mm. and we thought also from the siblings, uh, that was uh, siblings, this sounds very good, you know, in pronouncing it and for metal band primal fear is a strong expression so that's uh was in the final uh three in the end and then we decided for primal fear and how many uh, you had like uh, in total would you remember i can't remember maybe 15 names everybody oh, came up with something <laughs> everybody came up with three or four four or five names and in the end it was primal fear yeah. it's definitely it's like a stand out it's something very strong yeah i think so too yeah, it's a strong mm -hmm. metal Metal band name. Yep. Yes, very good, very good. And do you remember any other names? Can't remember, really, can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, Ralph, what uh, is the secret that Primal Fear um, got signed after the, uh, you know, straight after uh, your, uh, you found the band yeah. with the nuclear blast? What was the secret and, uh, you know, you told with uh, Hammerfall and uh, run it wide? Yeah, I mean, there was some history before, as you know, there's a band called Sinner that's still around and mm -hmm. uh, Matt, Tom, uh, are from Sinner. I came from Gamma Ray and everybody knows the story of my reje rejection for Jesus Priest and stuff. I was on the short list, never got invited for audition mm -hmm. and um, got out of Gamma Ray also because of that. Uh, issue that I ap ap applied for Judas Priest and in the end uh, it was not a good thing for a band to continue with uh, I mean we were we had some problems here and there it was the it was the 90s and we had no chance to somehow compose songs like we do nowadays via mm -hmm. internet so the guys wanted me to move up to Hamburg and I couldn't go because I still had my job and stuff and my family around and of course, the circumstances that um, I applied to Judas Priest was not a good thing for the band, for, for the entire climate in the band. They asked me, what would you do if they take you? And I said, I might go. And that's, of course, not a good uh, thing to continue with the band. So we separate ways. And then I got rejection for Priest. And uh, I was just thinking about quitting and doing nothing. But then um, I met Tom and, uh, and Matt again. Uh, we know each other for, for many years in the scene anyway, we're coming from the same city mm -hmm. and so uh, we sat together, I was singing in the studio for Sinner doing some background vocals like I do nowadays by the way too for the new album I do background vocals and I, I, I produce a little bit of vocals in terms of editing, Not uh, Matt is really preparing the entire vocals and, 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 and lyrics and, and everything for Sinner, I'm just hopping on, a, on a guest, as a guest and uh, yeah, so I was singing in the studio and we sat together uh, back in late 90s, it was 1997 that was. Mm -hmm. And uh, they asked me, why shouldn't, why won't we just compose some songs? And 
that's what we did. We, we recorded the full track demo. Mm -hmm. I sent it to JVC Japan. They were waiting anyway for some material because they wanted to continue with me after Gamma Ray. And then we immediately had this contract. And uh, it was a great start and a great kickoff for Primal Fear. Mm -hmm. And then all the European record companies, many of them, but all of them, uh, got interested in, in the package. And we, we were in a very good situation to, to sign good deals back in the days. That was the kickoff. <laughs> yes, great kickoff. <laughs> yeah. Great, 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 kickoff. great kickoff and a lot of names coming up and yeah. so on. So let's uh, focus on one thing uh, you yeah. told us uh, about Judas Priest. So you got a rejection. So I'm wondering what would you do differently? And do you think it turned out for the good? Or you would say you would love to have the chance? No, it was quite okay. I mean, you know, I I sent out my application when I was in Gamma Ray. I didn't expect anything anyway. So, but in the end, when the letter came in that I'm on a short list, of course, there's there's hope, right? And but that was a phase of the band. I don't want. I can't speak for this piece because it's all up to them. And uh, in the end, what what the result is, they had a very great vocalist with Tim. In my, he, I, he was the best match for them. So that's absolutely okay for me. And in the end, it's also okay that Primal Fear started, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, good albums came out, and everybody knows what happened to Priest now. It, it's not my, um, uh, I'm, I'm not in a position to speak for them. So I just want to say that it did not happen for me, and everything turned out well, right? So uh, everybody's lucky in the end. Priest has robbed back. Tim is doing great now, also with KK and stuff, and also these projects he's doing. And I'm fine with Primal Fear for many years now, so that's that's a great uh, result. It's a great uh, ending of the story in the end, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I agree. Like with Primal Fear, you just save something from a ground, like your own band, like you put a trademark on something. That's... Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. So cool. So with the Primal Fear, you release an album every one or two years, mm -hmm. like seven. Uh, how do you think? Okay. How did you manage to? It's just amazing. So many great people. Like everybody's writing, right? So that's uh, everybody's just you know, it's it's like uh, everybody's coming up with ideas all the time. So we could write albums every year if there was no tour going on. We still write and write and write, and that's a good position. I mean, it's great if you have so many writing and creating. That's great, you know. So that's easy for us to to do albums. Not only you know composing songs, but there has to be another album or so. We mm -hmm. are composing songs because we love what we do, and we love to hear all we together. You know, so that's the background of it. It's, it's also a great, uh, great. Uh, I think it's a great uh, fusion we have here, right? Can you tell us about uh, like the album creation process? Like who does what? Um, do you create the music first or the lyrics or like how that works basically we every compose, album is different yeah basically we compose the music but already have the melodies in mind so everybody's invited like i said everybody's right so um or the drummer thinks maybe first about the drums and everything but uh if you write songs you have to have some music background before you do the melody on for instance so I always, when I receive playbacks from the guy, they to you compose your lyrics on it and your, your melodies, then I do it. And sometimes they're already prepared by Matt. And uh, all the other members, they're always invited to write melodies and lyrics and, and as well. And that's what they do. So it's not, not, not all me doing the, the lyrics and the melodies. But the end, in the end, I sit here and I sing it. So I'm really, I'm going into the story going into the melodies and I, I, I create my little Ralph Schiefer's on it, you know what I mean? So yeah. in the end, uh, but once again, it's a teamwork, it's a team effort and that's great. So everybody's uh, thinking about everything when we are with, uh, writing music, not only about the drummer, about the drums, mm. the guitars, about the guitars. So everybody's thinking about an uh, in, in entire construction of the song. This actually is it's a very good approach that, uh, you know, everyone in the band do participate and, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. teamwork that's is the best. Yeah. Great stuff. Ralph, can we talk a bit uh, 
on the Gamma Ray era. Tell me, you were there around uh, five years? Yes. Um, and, you released, and you released uh, three albums, if I'm not yeah. wrong. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me your favorite album <laughs> <laughs> from that time? Do you have children, Nick? Eh? No. Do you, do you have children? You don't have children. So if you have, would have children and ask if you have a favorite child, that's not fair, right? It's the same oh, with okay. albums. <laughs> so, I mean, I love every album. I mean, it was only three we did together, and of course, the yeah, life, yeah, stuff, yeah. life stuff. So uh, I don't want to miss anything because everything is a step on the ladder of career, and everything is also a step in terms of learning and mm -hmm. uh, uh, collecting experience. And uh, that's why I love every single uh, recording I ever did, not only with Gamma Ray, also before with Time Pace, because yeah. you're always learning and, and you never stop learning still nowadays. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Insanity and Genius in the end was the last album I sung for, for, mm -hmm. on, on Gamma, for, for Gamma Ray. And of course, I like that most because it was the third and it's somehow the third involvement of that, of that band for me, you know. But, uh, of fusion we had back in the days. Cool. And how was to work with uh, Kai? Yeah, it's just amazing because he's just a fabulous uh, human being. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had some differences when we somehow uh, separated, but it was just, we spoke a month later on the phone and everything was fine again because he understood my Back, my background and I totally understood their background in terms of me moving up to Hamburg, being more creative. Mm -hmm. I just can repeat myself, it was not possible to write songs via internet. That's what we do nowadays also with Primal Fear. Of course, we also, also love if it's possible to get to sit together in the rehearsal studio and write because uh, it's a certain chemistry when you sit together. But there's mm -hmm. also a certain chemistry if everybody is somehow sitting back alone and bringing his, his, his ideas into the music. So. You know, it has advantages if you do this at home, but mm -hmm. it's also advantages if you do it in the so both work. Amazing stuff. So you mentioned earlier on that you were involved with Sinner, and I read that you are now currently involved in the focus for the new album. So I'm wondering what could we expect from the new um, album from Sinner, but with Matt, you are working, if I'm correct, for yes. Prime Affair. So I'm wondering what will be the difference then with Prime Affair? Sinner was always a little bit more the rock and roll stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course you can tell the difference. It would be not fair to do the same thing, right? And Sinner was there before, like I said, and uh, I can't tell you so much about it, but what I hear is just amazing. Uh, and, and it's not a lie because they, the guys, they rock like crazy, you know, starting with the drums and everything. So it's just great, great melodies, great compositions, strong, strong uh, chants and, and, and uh, uh, remarkable stuff and, and, and remindable stuff. If people can really uh, somehow, the melodies, they stick to your mind and everything. So it's great. And, it's always great to work together with Matt. We, we, after so many years, it works just amazing. and It's always getting better as well. So uh, I'm really happy to be involved and, and to bring my little bit. Of, I bring my color. It's not, you can't hear so much of me because I'm the lead vocalist and singer, of course. So it's just the background and some, so a little bit of like painting a picture and I might be the wallpaper or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> cool. And I'm wondering then, yeah, so can you share us any secrets for uh, for the upcoming Matt Singer album? Uh, secrets. Secret of, <laughs> secrets are secrets, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the constellation is just great. Uh, Matt is now keeping it in the family because uh, after, once again, after so many years, whether you grow together or whether you, or you hate each other, but we, we love each other more and more, and that's just great. And, and there's always ups and downs. It's like in a relationship, you know, but this is a healthy relationship. You're always, you're also growing in this, right, as a personality, as a musician. And uh, there are mistakes from everybody, and in the end, uh, we forgave and forgive. And that's just, uh, it's just a little bit, Sounds a little bit stupid, but it's like a little bit like a love story in the end. 
<laughs> and uh, I mean, we now are lucky and successful in what we do. So there's no reason to change anything. I mean, it's not a, it's a difficult situation we are in in current terms of uh, pandemic and shit. But you have to stick together, you know. And we're really happy that our, our fans support us, no matter if it's Cine Voodoo Circle, Primal Fear, and all the other uh, projects we we're doing. In the end, uh, we, we, this is also our job. But uh, what we do with Cine and Primal Fear is really love and it's in, in internal family, and that's great, you know. So amazing and clear it's like the two ones are much different like prime of fear and Matt singer so we should listen to them but absolutely it's, it's really rock and rollish and uh great melodies great choruses uh very melodic i love it amazing so you draw for both different inspirations so. yeah well, so let's go back to metal commando album and uh, number number 13 Yes, exactly. And we did not have any, <laughs> we had no chance to do this live because yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. That's very pity. Yeah. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. 13 is my, is my lucky number. Is uh, yours the same? Or you have, uh, or you think is an unlucky number? No, I'm not somehow superstitious in that way because, you know, it's just a number. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you tell me now Metal Commando was uh, something, uh, was any concept around Metal Commando? And no, there was no, no concept behind it, no. It was yeah. just always like, uh, we always somehow uh, really trying to, not only trying, we all, I think we are evolving every album and uh, that's somehow, again, uh, it's in, it's for us as five writing members of Primal Fear, it's mm -hmm. so easy to come up with good stuff in the end, but still we are very critical in the end. That's what we have to be because if uh, we don't release anything we don't like at first, you know, mm -hmm. so we have to like what we hear first place and then uh, we are really happy and lucky to bring it to the people and we're always very, very uh, somehow curious about opinions from the fans and it's always great to have such great feedback. Of course, there's also critical people, but it's also normal to somehow release something. You can't please everybody, you know, that's, but, but, but that's also not, it's not our goal to please everybody. Of course it is if you are somehow a musician, but, but you know, there's always people bitching about something in the end, right? But let's talk about the positive things. <laughs> yes, yeah, you kind of <laughs> please any like everyone. There will be always, you know, different exactly. opinions, exactly. tastes, and so on. Yeah. Yeah. We look forward to seeing you on the road again <laughs> for this album. <laughs> look forward to see you on the road again. Oh yes, I mean, yes. hey, everybody's <laughs> just you know, I'm I'm saying the same thing. Like every musician, we miss it to play live, you know, in the end. Yeah. It's been a long time now. It's been a long time, yeah. Certainly, I would love to see Primal Fear like a gig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, last time we seen you was, I think, 2018. Oh, knock out. Mm. <laughs> I remember this one as well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's not that far from where you live, right? Yeah, it's not too far away. It's one hour drive. One hour that's ride. Yeah. 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 Great, great festival. Yeah, we missed the summer festivals. Now everybody yes. is coming up with canceling the festivals because it makes no sense in the end. There's mm -hmm. no chance to gather more people than maybe 500 nowadays or whatever with with all these uh, shit what's going on. But uh, we're in this together and we will overcome this together. Yes. Certainly, yeah. for sure. So um, with uh, Metal Commando, you came back with uh, to, to nuclear blast so i'm wondering uh what made the change in the first place because you left them for frontiers records like ages ago and then you came back so why did you leave them in the first place and why did you come back <laughs> it's always yeah it's always a matter of um also with the record company it's pretty much a teamwork you know so but uh, if you have the feeling that uh, the work could be done better in the end, you, you have somehow meetings and conversations, how we can improve stuff. 
But if you have the feeling that you are not supported the, the way you love to be supported as a band, you have to change teams sometimes. Mm. So, um, and that, that was ha that's what happened without blaming them where people personally, whatever. It, uh, sometimes the, the market is just really rushed and really many bands who were <clears throat> need to be supported in the end. And we failed to change team back in the days. And the same thing happened again without uh, somehow creating bad blood to anybody personally, uh, not at all. And then also not somehow uh, we're not playing Frontiers or whatever. It was a great working relationship which has just ended by not signing a, uh, more contracts. And we came back mm -hmm. to New York Blast. In the end, this is also half an hour ride for me to go there mm -hmm. and also for Matt to have meetings with the people personally and not to speak on the phone and or drive or fly to Italy or whatever and yeah. uh, negotiate eye to eye. This is sometimes it's better than just uh, writing emails and, and, and yeah. having conversations on phone. If mm -hmm. you have uh, people sitting uh, in front of you and look, look to the people's eyes and, 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 and speak about what we can do uh, to improve things. And that's really great again with the Grab Last. They have uh, great people working for us now. Yeah, that's for sure. It's easier to talk person to person than yeah. all the emails. Yes. Speaking of uh, working to get a, a relationship, so you were uh, going to, um, you are working together with Tarian, and I Will Be Gone will be released on 9 April. So I'm wondering how was it to work with her? How did her voice complement yours? <laughs> and can you give us also a bit of details about what we can expect from this uh, single? Yes. I mean, the song is already known. It's on the album. Yeah. Album, mm -hmm. album. Yes. And, Great, uh, song. Great song. When I heard the result of her recordings, I was just blown away because she still has a wonderful, beautiful voice. And it just fits so perfect into that song. And I'm um, really happy that we did this in the end because I saw the video and heard the song, of course, and I know people, they will love that. We just put out a snippet uh, a few hours ago as a, promotion, as a promotion for the 9th of April when the album, uh, the, the single, will be released excuse me. And, you know, people will like it. it, it she's, she has a beautiful voice and, 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 this, uh, and the song with the acoustic guitars, the harmonies and everything, they're really fitting well. It's not only to promote this as, as the product for Prime of Years because I'm totally 100% behind this, you know. And I love this kind of music, so uh, it's a great uh contribution and it's a great team also although we did not sit together or sing together in the studio that didn't happen uh, before the pandemic uh, very seldom that people were together in the studio singing uh, but nowadays it's even more difficult with the pandemic right but anyway the result is just great uh, you will hear it and uh as you can hear on the snippet already it's sounding amazing mm -hmm. Amazing. Amazing. So the first thing I will do after the interview is watch the uh, snippet and then pre-order everything. Like, Thank amazing. you very much for your support. I'm very happy. No worries. But I'm wondering because I looked at the CD, so there are five songs, if I'm correct, on the CD. So yes. Taria sings on every five or is it like a combination? How is it? No, she's just an I will be done, which is fine. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and, then, and then we have another song which was not on the album. Uh, what was the name? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> one year ago. It's one year ago when we released the album. Can you imagine? And we did not play it live, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We will put out a list of, of, uh, of titles which were, are on the album. And there's a special special edition with uh, songs which have not been on the album. And uh, I think one song was already released and remastered. Sorry, I can't tell you that. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a year okay. ago, you know. But it's going to be interesting. Interesting. So we will look it up and see. But yeah, it's a great extra songs and so yeah. on. Especially so with one, title, one title is both. Uh, Vote of no confidence that it's my lyrics in the end, so, <laughs> so I have to remember, right? And, yeah, and uh, another song, uh, yes, what was the name? Sorry, 
<laughs> no problem, no problem, Ralph. So how do you manage to do so many sessions, like guest sessions for other bands, and also Primal Fear? And do you have any personal life at the end? Yes, glad I have. But yeah. Okay, you, you now there is of course you have more time now. now I understand. I understand your background, Nick, because when you are doing this in the same house, like you live, like um, you have your studio in the house, sometimes mm -hmm. you don't leave this room. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have to really somehow uh, what twelve hours now? Uh, I think I might leave this room, you know, because if, if you are creative and if you love what you do, you forget the time. You totally forget yes. the time. And uh, now I'm also not able to go in, in the gym because they're closed. So I have to do this at home as well. So everything is happening at home. Yes. And um, yeah, so in the end, the, the question was correct. Do you have a personal life? <laughs> yes, uh, I do have, and I'm really happy for it. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. And regarding the gym, like, do you train at home or you don't do anything at the moment? Yes, I, I, I do this at home. There's no other chance. Otherwise, I would go to the gym uh, three, four times a week. That's mm -hmm. what I still want to keep because I think mm -hmm. it's all, life is always a balance of things. You know, if you do too much of one thing, you mm -hmm. might uh, you're losing balance. And um, it's the same mm -hmm. when, you, when you sing, when you're touring as a metal screamer every day, full blast. You have to have the other, the other part, the counterpart, where you just sit back. Uh, and uh, meditate a little bit. I mean, if you would ask me 20 years ago, Ralph, do you meditate? Uh, I would say like, stupid or whatever, but you, you, it's great when there's something behind it because there's always this yin and yang and there's really, you have to have a balance. And yeah, that's really something you need to have. That's, that's uh, true. And uh, we actually, you mentioned about voice. So we have a question here from John Bonham. Uh, can I ask Ralph how he looks after his voice to keep consistent on tour? I remember seeing Primal Fear at Wacken at about 11.30 in the morning, and he still sounded great. Thank you very much for the compliment, first of all. And yes, I'm really happy that I still have it. And I also do something. I, you might know that I'm also a vocal teacher, and I'm doing my own exercise somehow. <laughs> and um, uh, yes, I'm trying to keep a good vocal health and to have a good vocal health is not always being strict about everything oh my god my voice is so important I got to do this that sometimes it's also to relax and say well then i drink a beer or whatever or, or i have a whiskey at the weekend mm -hmm. and if you if you're too strict with yourself this this is also not good sometimes because uh, this can narrow things down you have to be relaxed in the end uh, that's what works for me you know everybody's unique uh, for every person uh, different things are working for me this works to have a quite balanced life not to be too healthy sometimes i like i said i drink my beer i drink my whiskey on the weekend and some and sometimes it's only sport during the week you know it's always the balance it's always uh, a good combination of everything Amazing. So speaking of uh, vocals, so I'm wondering because you are a vocal teacher as well, do you think everyone would be able to sing for octaves and do uh, shrieks with the right practice? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I'm pretty honest if you are, if you're not able to somehow repeat a note or if you're not somehow very, very musical, there would be no chance. So uh, it's it's not that everybody could sing. I mean, if somebody uh, is trying to have lessons with me, I take very mm -hmm. beginners and I also take uh, people who are already in, in singing. But mm -hmm. if you are not able to hold a note or to, to repeat a note and if you're not musical at all, there's no chance. And I, I will tell people right away, I will, will try sometimes, but then I, have to, uh, I need to tell them that uh, they might learn guitar, <laughs> to play the guitar or whatever in a friendly way because you know um, not everybody is able to sing in the end uh, it's it's also there has to be some natural stuff coming from birth yes. you know? yeah interesting take uh, especially yeah. you often hear uh, singing mm -hmm. like everyone can sing and yeah this is a very interesting like mm -hmm. yeah you need uh, some talent <laughs> Oh, exactly <laughs> different. <laughs> yeah. 
So coming from a vocal coach. <laughs> <laughs> yes, maybe you have to start arguing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Raf, tell me about the, um, your opinion about the metal uh, scene in general and in German if you want. What do you think? Is it very strong at this time? It's, it's very strong in terms of uh, sticking together. I mean, it's not only talking about this is all a big family, you know, that sometimes this is just phrases from people, mm -hmm. but for me, for me, there's more background because people in the metal scene, they're, for me, they're pretty much more patient than many other people, you know. So we stick together, we go through not only this pandemic, we also went through shit before, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, there's always this healthy, uh, let's say, background, uh, underground sometimes of people who are listening to to our genre and to this kind of music and uh, this is just um, yeah then I can say it's a big family because we are in somehow doing this out of our passion out of our blood and out of our heart not only as a musician also as a metal listener and mm -hmm. um, the best example for me is always when you are on, on a cruise like 70,000 tons of metal or all mm -hmm. those other cruises, uh, cruises we, uh, also we were before the entire people, everybody is, is together having party, right? And uh, this, I think this is this is extraordinary, and I think this is uh, only one time. I think it's, it's an example of, of something uh, very special and unique in the end, right? And from, and sorry, from all the festivals and tours that you did, which uh, which festival would be your favorite? Would you have any? Yeah, I mean, it's also hard to say because we were doing the Monsters of Rock of Sao Paulo, Brazil. That was just amazing. It was a blast. And also, back in every time we were, we are in <laughs> And also, the Knockout Festival. It, it would be not fair to to say where we don't love to do, or, or, or to say we would do this festival more better than this festival or whatever. It's always great, you know, somehow. And um, that's what we miss so much now, uh, summer festivals, and hopefully it comes back and it will be back. But of yeah. course, every thousand tons of metal is another category. <laughs> it is, and for us, it's just, it's, it's been jacked from hell. I mean, we are traveling to Miami from Europe mm -hmm. and yes. having one day and then go on a cruise and the first show at 4 a.m. in the morning. You're totally <laughs> some, you're totally somewhere else and out of out of space doing a show. <laughs> you know, last time last time we did the, the the first show on the cruise, and we thought, well, I mean, this is tough because people are just getting in the cabins and preparing. But the, the you know, the, the it was packed. It was it was a packed show. People, it was the first show. There was no other show on the boat, so uh, <laughs> they, everybody came to saw, to see Primal Fear, and it was, it was just overwhelming and for. For us, it was hectic, you know. We also yes. came, we came, we came on the cruise, and oh my God, is our gear? Where is everything, you know? And then we just set, put everything together. Uh, thanks to the technicians we have, the, the great people who are working for us, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everything worked in the end, right? Yeah. But yeah. different crowd, I assume. Everyone in bikinis or like swimming clothes, like nothing yes. you would see in Germany. Yes. <laughs> Great. And is yes. there any country that you haven't toured but you would love to go there? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's, for instance, uh, the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> yes, wow. there are some countries we, we were not, but uh, not so much. But uh, like I said, the Philippines are still to be touring and, and all these uh, Far East countries. Mm -hmm. I mean, Japan, I can't can't count anymore how many times we were there and it's always fantastic japan it's always great and um but there are some more asian countries who would love to visit once speaking of the ancient countries and philippines do you know if you have like an audience there who would be interested or will you beat the new band there no there's no new band anymore because the philippines were visited already in the 70s and the 80s also so but uh, not for us but uh and i think there's going to be people there of course yes because there are metalheads down there i never have thoughts like <laughs> philippines listening to metal 
Yes. yes, I mean, the scorpions were in Philippines, for instance, right? Oh, okay. Amazing. I never yeah. heard that. I've been like... everywhere anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. What I found interesting is you are much older than Fobit and Emirate, but you still choose to work with Jakob Hansen. So I'm wondering in what way did he innovate your music? He just totally understands us. 